Hello everybody, I am Mika Seppälä. In this video I will discuss three sample problems on the use of induction to justify statements. Let us first recall that mathematical induction is a kind of a machine that produces a proof for a statement that depends on an integer which integer typically takes positive values. Now the machine has three steps. First we have to show that the statement is true for the first value of the parameter. Then we make the induction assumption. We assume that the statement holds for some value m of the parameter. And then in the third step we show that well if it is true for m then it is true also for m plus 1. If we manage to do all these steps 1, 2 and 3, then we have built a machine that proves the statement for any value of this uh, parameter. Namely, if it is true for the first value, then by 2 and 3 it is true also for the second value. And now if it is true for the second value, then by 2 and 3 it is true also for the third value and so on. So this is how induction works. It always has these three parts. In this problem, we have to show that for all positive integers n, the sum of squares of integers up to n equals n cubed over 3 plus n squared over 2 plus n over 6. That is summation k from 1 to n k squared equals n cubed over 3 plus n squared over 2 plus n over 6. Now, the proof by induction has the three steps. First, we have to check that the formula holds for the first value of the parameter. Now, the first value of the parameter n that comes into question is 1. So, if n equals 1, then the left-hand side is summation k from 1 to 1 k squared. And that is just 1 squared, which is 1. And the right-hand side is 1 third plus 1 half plus 1 over 6 but that adds up to 1 also. So if n equals 1, the formula claims that 1 equals 1, and this is clearly true. In the second step, we make the induction assumption. We assume that the formula holds if n equals m. So we assume that for the integer m, the sum of squares of in integers up to m is m cubed over 3 plus m squared over 2 plus m over 6. To complete the proof by induction, we have to show that the formula also holds when n equals m plus 1. So we have to prove this formula for n equals m plus 1. Now, we start with the left-hand side, the sum k from 1 to m plus 1 k squared, equals m plus 1 squared, that's the last term, plus sum k from 1 to m k squared. But now summation k from 1 to m k squared is of the form to which we can apply the induction assumption. So by the induction assumption, this summation k from 1 to m k squared equals m cubed over 3 plus m squared over 2 plus m over 6 so we conclude that summation k from 1 to m plus 1 k squared equals m plus 1 squared plus m cubed over 3 plus m squared over 2 plus m over 6. But this right hand side, the last expression, can be simplified. And it really is m plus 1 cubed over 3 plus m plus 1 squared over 2 plus m plus 1 over 6. Hence it is of the desired form proving the formula. In the next problem we will consider composed functions. Recall that if f and g are functions and if the range of g is contained in the domain of definition of f, then the composed function f composed with g is defined by setting f composed with g at x equals f at g of x. So for example, if f of x equals x squared and g of x equals sine of x, then both composed functions f composed with g and g composed with f are defined 
and f composed with g at x equals sine squared of x and g composed with f at x equals sine of x squared. So f composed with g is different from g composed with f. In this problem we will consider the function f0 defined by setting f0 at x equals 1 divided by 2 minus x. And then we define a sequence of functions by setting f at n plus 1 equals f0 composed with fn. So f1 is f0 composed with f0 itself. f2 is f0 composed with f1. f3 is f0 composed with f2 and so on. And our task is to find an expression for fn, guess an expression, and prove it to be true by induction. So in order to be able to guess an expression, we need to compute few functions fn. So f1 is f0 composed with f0. So the expression for f1 is obtained by setting 1 divided by 2 minus x in place of x in the expression 1 divided by 2 minus x. And that simplifies to 2 minus x divided by 3 minus 2 times x. That is straightforward high school algebra. And f2 is obtained by plugging in place of x in the definition of f0 the expression 2 minus x divided by 3 minus 2 times x. And that simplifies to 3 minus 2 times x divided by 4 minus 3 times x. And in the same way, we compute that f3 of x is 4 minus 3 times x divided by 5 minus 4 times x. So this leads us to conjecture that a general formula for the function fn is that fn at x equals n plus 1 minus n times x divided by n plus 2 minus n plus 1 times x. So the sequence of functions fn is defined by setting fn plus 1 equals f0 composed with fn for n greater or equal to 0 and here f0 at x is 1 divided by 2 minus x. And by the previous computations we now claim that uh, a general expression for fn is fn at x equals n plus 1 minus n times x divided by n plus 2 minus n plus 1 times x. We prove this by induction. The first value of the parameter n that comes into question is 0. So if we insert 0 in the formula above for fn, we get 0 plus 1 minus 0 times x divided by 0 plus 2 minus 0 plus 1 times x. That is 1 divided by 2 minus x. And uh, this was the defining formula for f0, so apparently this formula is true for n equals 0. Next, we make the induction assumption. We assume that the formula is true for n equals m. So we assume that fm at x equals m plus 1 minus m times x divided by m plus 2 minus m plus 1 times x. To complete the proof, we have to show that the formula holds for n equals m plus 1. So we have to consider the function f m plus 1 at x. By the definition, f m plus 1 at x equals f0 evaluated at f m of x. So it equals 1 divided by 2 minus f m at x. This is just the definition of f m plus 1. And now we have the induction assumption for f m. So we can expand fm at x using the induction assumption. And uh, fm at x by the induction assumption equals m plus 1 minus m times x divided by m plus 2 minus m plus 1 times x. So we plug that in 
in place of fm at x in the expression 1 divided by 2 minus fm at x, which is fm plus 1 at x. Now then we simplify and a straightforward high school algebra simplification leads that fm plus 1 at x equals m plus 2 minus m plus 1 times x divided by m plus 3 minus m plus 2 times x. Hence the expression for m plus 1 that we obtained is of the desired form and this proves that the formula is true. Leonardo Fibonacci was a prominent mathematician in Pisa, now a part of Italy. In the 13th century, Fibonacci introduced the Hindu-Arabic number system to Europe. Prior to Fibonacci, people computed in Europe using Roman numerals. And now today we all use the Hindu-Arabic number system that Fibonacci brought to Europe. Fibonacci numbers, capital Fn, are defined by setting capital F0 equals 0, capital F1 equals 1, and capital Fn plus 1 equals capital Fn plus capital F at n minus 1. This for n greater than 1. So the Fibonacci numbers start 0, 1, and then the third number is 0 plus 1, which is 1, and the fourth number is 1 plus 1, which is 2, and then it goes on 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 91, 146, and so forth. These are important numbers. The sequence of Fibonacci numbers relates to many phenomena in the nature. For example, sunflower head displays spirals that can be modeled by Fibonacci numbers. The golden ratio is defined as the positive solution to the equation alpha squared equals 1 plus alpha. This positive solution is 1 plus square root of 5 divided by 2, and it is approximately 1.618, and so forth. Now we claim that the Fibonacci numbers Fn satisfy Fn is at most alpha to the power n minus 1 for n greater or equal to 0. And we prove this by induction. We observe that the statement is clearly true for n equals 0 and for n equals 1. Here it is now important to make sure that the statement holds for the first two values of the integer n. So for n equals 0, the statement fn is at most alpha to the power n minus 1 simply says that 0 is at most alpha to the power minus 1. But alpha is a positive number, so alpha to the power minus 1 is also a positive number, so 0 is certainly less than any other any positive number, therefore f0 is less than alpha to the power minus 1. So the statement holds for n equals 0. For n equals 1, the statement says that f1, which equals 1, is at most alpha to the power 1 minus 1, that is alpha to the power 0. But alpha to the power 0 is 1. Therefore, for n equals 1, the statement simply says that 1 is at most 1, which certainly is true. So the statement holds for n equals 0 and for n equals 1. Next we make the induction assumption. We assume that the statement fn is at most alpha to the power n minus 1 is true for n equals m and for n equals m minus 1. So here we need the two values m and m minus 1 and this is important just in a moment. So now to conclude the proof we have to show that fm plus 1 is at most alpha to the power m. Here we recall that alpha has the property that alpha squared equals 1 plus alpha and fm plus 1 is defined by setting fm plus 1 equals fm plus fm minus 1. So 
We start by this definition, fm plus 1 equals fm plus fm minus 1. Then we use the induction assumption, which says that fm is at most alpha to the power m minus 1, and fm minus 1 is at most alpha to the power m minus 2. Now, from the expression alpha to the power m minus 1 plus alpha to the power m minus 2, we may take alpha to the power m minus 2 as a common factor. The, the other factor is alpha plus 1. But now, alpha was defined by the equation alpha squared equals 1 plus alpha, so alpha plus 1 equals alpha squared. So we conclude that fm plus 1 is at most alpha to the power m minus 2 times alpha squared but that is alpha to the power m. And this is of the desired type. So we have shown that the statement fm plus 1 is at most alpha to the power m is true. So this completes the proof. And for all Fibonacci numbers fn, fn is always at most alpha to the power n minus 1, where alpha is the golden ratio.